Hoffman and welcome to Weekend Edition. I'm Crystal Paco, so glad you could join us. The Internet can be a dangerous place. This evident by the number of cases the FBI is receiving on cyber crimes. Here's more on the trends, what they are, and how to not fall victim. The FBI is, is theirs. It's yours. It's the community owns the FBI, okay? We work for the community. While most of what we know about the Federal Bureau of Investigation is what we see on television and in the movies, that shouldn't be the case. FBI Special Agent Joseph Strauss addressed Rotarians this week, where he sheds some of the mystery behind the federal agency, whose mission is both criminal investigations and national security. He also shared crime trends here at home and across the nation, many of which are occurring online. We have a lot of crime uh, cases that are crimes against children. Um, of course, with the Internet and social media, crimes against children have uh, e exploded uh, worldwide. It's an extreme danger. The danger has prompted the need for a new task force, the Marianas Child Exploitation Task Force. It's, uh, it's composed of child crimes investigators and specialists from all the agencies, FBI, HSI, Homeland Security, Coast Guard Investigative Service, Guam Police Department, Guam Attorney General's Office, um, several other agencies are participating on this. Uh, but it's a coordinated effort where we have a task force that's focusing on these crimes against children um, Internet-related cyber crimes. But it's not just children who are vulnerable. Local businesses have fallen victim to business email compromise scams. Let's just imagine a, a, a business, right, and has a, a CEO, an owner-operator, a, a, a mid-level management staff, and then a, a administrative staff. There's criminal organizations throughout the world that are researching that business, and they're spending a lot of time and effort uh, going through social media, going through... Um, uh, uh, filings in the community, uh, getting getting records, and they're, they're actually studying and analyzing the business. To include getting directories um, and email contact information. How does it work? A mid-level or lower-level employee responsible for dispersing paychecks or paying vendor invoices will receive what looks like a legitimate email from management. And the email would say something like, um, you know, Sally, uh, uh, please send the, make the $15,000 wire to this account number. Employee, believe it or not, in many cases, will do that. We've had businesses in the community, and this is nationwide, and also here in Guam, uh, that have been victimized by this, okay? And so and many times the businesses don't realize it until all of a sudden the, their accounts are drained down, the invoices they thought were paid are not paid, payroll checks are coming back, NSF. Some of them have been, have been lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? And then... They come to the FBI uh, to, to help. In many cases, it's way too late. It's way after the fact. Hackers are also targeting the average user, sometimes disguised as a big retailer preparing to ship you an item you didn't order. How the way the scam works is um, they will send out an email uh, making it look like it's, it's something from like Amazon or eBay or, or like a big box store or something, an Internet sale. Okay, they send it out. They want you to look at it and say, I didn't order that. And so you, you click their link to show you more detail on the transaction or to cancel it. Here, press here to cancel it. And that's when they're, that's when they're loading the malicious software into your computer. Strawn says delete these emails immediately. They are the coping mechanism for those that need it most. The program is called Rainbows, but their pot of gold is helping children facing emotional trauma. Our Keani Mandiola sat down with Rainbows for All Children to learn more about their impact. Death, divorce, deployment, just some of the most emotionally traumatic events for any person, especially children. Since 1987, the Rainbows for All Children, Guam, has served as a nonprofit peer support group organization for children who have experienced loss or crisis. The program helps children navigate through their feelings with the help of registered and certified Rainbow's facilitators and coordinators. Marie Holleran is the director of the program. Part of the mission of Rainbow's is to address the grief that they have had and to develop their self esteem self-confidence. The program is currently active at Weddingale, Tamuning and LBJ Elementary Schools, Santa Barbara and St. Anthony Catholic Schools, 
and Estumbo Middle School. Evangeline Iglesias is the principal of Weddingell Elementary. The school, with having the, the program in, in there, helps the kids to cope. And that's the whole point, because when the kids can cope with whatever they're going through, then they can succeed academically and socially. It helps them to build a more bonding relationship with their peers and with their teachers. And she is not the only one who has seen success with the program. The Matanani family has been a part of Rainbows for the past 12 years. Siblings Valina, Caden, and Paliana Matanani have all received support from the program, and they all agree that it's had a positive impact on their lives. Rainbows has helped me get through an emotional time, and it helped me to open up and better focus on school and social-wise. Rainbows helped me um, learn how to get over the loss of my sister and how they can help us realize that even though she's gone, it, she'll still be with us no matter what. Rainbows helps with, the, with um, what we get over of and it helps a lot of students to not to to be their selves and others. The program aims to help children overcome feelings of anger, confusion, sadness, low self-esteem, and lack of trust in order to develop a more positive attitude at home and at school. To keep the flow of helping others emotionally, Rainbows will be reaching out to the community. They are hosting a 3.5-mile run walk to raise funds to continue providing their free services to children. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Kiani Mendiola. For more information, you can contact Marie Holleran at 632-0257. Slight trouble on the gridiron. One man is calling on village mayors to help with efforts to keep the youth football games and practices in play. The goal? He wants a headquarters where the youngsters are always in the advantage when playing the game. Nick Delgado has the story. He's been playing for most of his life. Alan Blend has built up his passion for football over the years. So the GNYFF does uh, have a kid in every village. I don't think there's, there's not one village that's not represented. And they're not to say that uh, we're going to break it down to that level, but uh, it, it, it does impact every, every village on the, on the island. We want to do our part as uh, stewards and uh, give back as well. So the league itself is willing to, uh, to help in any way, shape, or form. He's now passing on the talent to the younger generation and serving as the Guam Youth National Football Federation Vice President. I feel that it's my, my turn to give back. I had coaches volunteer along my upbringing, so um, the cycle of life is, uh, <laughs> it's my turn not to give back, so I, I, I do it for the kids. But this was Alan before Island Mayors this week, outlining his next play. There's a, basically a basketball um, gymnasium in each village there's a baseball field in each village um, but you know there's no football field in, in each of the villages and we don't expect to have a football field in each village but I mean if we can um, have a couple more options that way we don't um, uh, overuse the facilities like we're doing now. So we're seeking um, a, a piece of property that we can develop and put money into uh, solely for the GNYFF headquarters so we can uh, have a place to call home and, and uh, hold uh, seminars like we just had with uh, Zach Banner and Larry, uh, they came out here. But, you know, I mean, if we can bring them out to our own uh, facility that's tailored for football, then uh, it, it, it kind of um, helps us. Uh, it's a win-win situation for everybody. His move to find more places that the kids ages 6 to 14 can practice and play on without any potential hold-ups. If not, um, just partner up with the current teams that we do have so that the kids have a safe and uh, conducive area um, that they can call home and take pride in uh, to practice uh, football. But it doesn't stop there. Allen says they are not looking for any handouts. He says they plan to maintain and upkeep the designated fields for play and one day make a touchdown on getting a permanent place of their own. More, more so for the kids, it gives them something to strive for. You know, I mean, they, they, uh, they play in a, a nice facility. You know, they, they, they look forward to those kind of things instead of having to practice in a playground somewhere. And, uh, you know, God forbid anybody should get hurt, but, you know, they, they, they make do with what they have. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahusi Nick Delgado. Keeping the Chamorro culture intact, the Guam Preservation Trust is putting on quite the event to educate and build on ways we can keep our island culture and history alive. Once again, here's Nick Delgado. Building a strong relationship with the military, it's been a struggle since the announcement that thousands of Marines and their families would be relocating from Okinawa, Japan to Guam. But has that progressed? 
There's always going to be uh, the disconnect, but uh, in communicating and doing a lot of the things that we do today, uh, the connection is going to ultimately happen. A connection Joe Kinadza says they want to happen the right way. He's the chief program officer of the Guam Preservation Trust, so the effort is only fitting that work is done in the best interest of preserving the island. We hope that uh, uh, the military becomes our partner mm -hmm. uh, as we move on uh, to preserve uh, our heritage. A movement that now will bring other preservationists and conservationists alike to one table to talk issues during the Pacific Preservation Summit. We are expecting uh, historic preservation officers from the different islands, uh, conservation organizations from the different islands. We are going to get together so that we can be able to look at uh, how we can uh, get our resources together to help each other uh, there are issues that we need to talk about, issues about climate change, issues about threatening uh, historic sites, and also issues uh, uh, that are in our front yard. Pointing back to the military buildup, Kanata says it's the public's responsibility to ensure they connect, appreciate, and preserve the place we call home. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahusi Nick Delgado. The Pacific Preservation Summit is scheduled for February 26th through the 28th at the Guam Museum. For more information, call 472-9439 or check them out at pacificpreservation.org. And keeping with the topic of preservation, it's the year of the reef. The Guam Hotel and Restaurant Association recently discussed the topic, a top tourist attraction, coral reefs and promoting eco-friendly tourism. Carmen Tirlahi has the story. Coral reefs are alive. Mallory Morgan is a visiting fellow from the National Coral Reef Management who dedicates her life to protecting coral reefs. She says it's the plants and algae living inside of the coral that keeps the coral living with such vibrant red, blue, and purple hues. On Guam, there are more than 350 species of coral on a reef that would add up to 20,000 football fields long a unique biodiversity many tourists pay to see. This is something that the tourists come here for, but beyond the beauty of reefs, um, it's really important to understand the shoreline protection that reefs provide to um, our infrastructure and our hotels and our beaches. In recent years, she outlines how global warming has damaged the coral in what is known as coral bleaching. So what's happening is, since the corals are like animals, just like puppy dogs, just like you and me, they're getting really stressed out because it's really hot. And so what happens is they expel those plants that live inside of them, the food that gives them food and color, um, and they turn white, which is that white skeleton that I was showing you underneath. So that's what causes the white um, with coral bleaching, and that's why it's called coral bleaching. It's a global issue with local stressors, such as sediment runoff, overfishing, and recreational damage that can add to the loss of Guam's main tourist attraction, the coral reef. She stresses favorite tourist activities can be damaging, like kayaks that bump into the coral or tourists accidentally stepping on the reef while snorkeling. She says her goal here on Guam is to work with hotel managers and tourists to preserve this natural resource. My focus is really how can we keep these reefs healthy to keep the tourists coming. You know, with social media and Yelp and Instagram, the whole world knows exactly what everything looks like right away. Um, so it's really important to keep these reefs healthy. GHRA will be hosting more trainings to educate the tourism industry on safe reef tourism. Reporting for Guam News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Chilahi. Stay tuned, more when Weekend Edition returns. There are more ways to experience KUAM News than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM News app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. Half the day, I'm in the club. Half the day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half the day, I'm in the club.
no room for doubts this Valentine's Day by heading to IT&E. For February only, get your boo the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 for just $59. And for the Apple lovers, get the 10 for just $199 on the 40 gig 4G LTE data plan. Or two S8s for just $199 on a share plan. This sweetheart deal is available for a limited time only. If you get nervous about having dental treatment, you're not alone. An estimated 35 million adults experience anxiety or nervousness at the simple thought of visiting the dentist. As your dentist, I strive to make your visit as painless or pain-free as possible. And I frequently tell my patients that in the 21st century, if we can give you medicines to put your tooth asleep or medicines to take an infection or toothache away, we can surely give you something to help relax you and take all fear away. No one ought to sit in a dental chair thinking of bad childhood memories or fearing injections. If you're a dental coward, but you really do want your teeth fixed, don't wait until the pain is killing you. Come in, tell us your fears, and set up an appointment. We have convinced many that dental treatment doesn't need to be scary anymore. For your helpful dental minute, I'm Dr. Kenny Bourgeois of Paradise Smiles. You shall never know all the good a simple smile can do. Connect with KUAM News. Find us on your favorite social media platform. Follow us and stay in the know with Guam's news leader. Welcome back to Weekend Edition. Lots of engagement and stories that had you lighting up our social media. Asha Robles joins us now with Trend Spotting. Happy day, everyone. So many likes and some dislikes, but we welcome them all. Here are some of the stories that were trending on our social media. A story out of Manilao had several people raging about the roads in that village on our social media. After a three-car crash in Manilao along Route 10 and a fatal crash that occurred in January, Mayor Alan Ngata is begging leaders to do something about it, like installing a traffic light and a crosswalk. Ngata saying he's seen cars speeding over 50 miles per hour on this stretch of road. Here's what you had to say about the story. Selena Kitachai on Facebook says, Public works should think about building a crosswalk bridge type, thinking it'd be safer. Christina Soriano says, For reals, too many accidents in this particular area of Manila need traffic lights and a crosswalk. The problems over at the Department of Corrections are continuing to trend. The latest one about how an inmate was accidentally released from custody over the weekend. The director said an internal affairs investigation was launched and the release of an inmate, Ben Espinosa, was a result of miscommunication. The story had a lot of you communicating with us. Some of the Facebook comments included, Eric DePlata on Facebook says, Ridiculous. I know people make mistakes, but accidentally releasing an inmate that might be dangerous to the people is not a mistake. Someone needs to be fired for this. Ashley Cruz James states, If I was a prison inmate and you mistakenly released me, I'm not going back in quietly. If and when you find me, not my fault you mistakenly released me. A plea for help from Anthony Duenas to KUAM via Facebook Messenger led the news team to Guam Regional Medical City to talk with him about problems he was having in getting his son medevaced to Hawaii. According to Duenas, apparently changes to military policies forced delays in getting his son medical treatment. His son Robert would later be moved to GRMC where he was able to get help and surgery he needed. Congresswoman Berdalio's office is looking into what happened. One message on Facebook read, My heart goes out to you and your family. I will include your family in my daily rosary. The change for assistance for our vets are not acceptable at all. These men and women put their lives on the line for our freedom. Prayers for our child of Guam and his family to heal and feel better soon. Santa Maria, please help us. 
And finally, Aja Springs' initial video about her tire being stolen at the Aganya Shopping Center may have gone viral, but close to 25,000 views and more than 360 shares, so has her story. This single mother, working three jobs, shared with KUAM her thoughts about the memes that were posted spoofing what happened to her. She says she gets that people think it's funny, but crime is getting worse on Guam. She's thankful her daughter wasn't in the car and no one got hurt. Here is one of your reactions to her story. Angie says, Wow, most of them are adults. She seems younger than them, but has more common sense and respect. Everybody trying to impress people online, yet they lack respect, common sense, and compassion. May God deal with the person who did that. They desperately needed the tire, and God bless this awesome single mother. These are just some of the popular stories on our social media. I'm Asha Robles with Trend Spotting. Keep those likes, comments, engagements, and emojis coming. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Asha. Up next, the Guam Crime Stoppers Report. Cars Plus and Mighty has the trucks. During Ram Truck Month, save up to ninety-seven fifty on new Ram trucks. Cars Plus has a great selection of 2018 Ram trucks. Plus, shop our remaining 2017 Ram 1500s. Voted Guam's best truck two years in a row. The Ram truck comes with a five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty. And with 1.99 APR financing for qualified buyers, there's no better time to buy than now. It's Ram Truck Month, and only Cars Plus and Mighty has the trucks. Cars Plus, driven by you. The Down Syndrome Association of Guam exists to support families of individuals with Down Syndrome. We're a group of parents who have children with Down Syndrome and know the joys and challenges of raising them. For more information about the health, development, and education of a child or adult with Down Syndrome, please contact Vicki Ariola at 472-6114. How does tourism work for Guam? Half a day! Tourism tax dollars fund improvements around our island. Tourism helps maintain our community centers and public parks. Tourism dollars are invested where it counts, promoting village shops and locally made products. Tourism keeps the spirit of our past alive through restoration of historical sites. Tourism supports environmental efforts that protect our natural resources. Tourism improves our quality of life. It helps make Guam a better place to live, work and visit. Tourism works for Guam! With every era comes two things. Change. And a Honda Accord that defines a generation. Introducing the all new Accord. The most impressive Honda ever. All right, welcome back, everybody. Sergeant Paul Tapau is here, as he always is at this time, and we are talking about keeping the community safe. And our feedback, Sarge, is one of the main reasons why you guys are able to do your job. So it's a partnership, truly. Yeah, absolutely. The community uh, partnership that we're seeing um, coming into the Guam Crime Stoppers as well as the Guam Police Department is we're starting to see it pay its dividends now with um, the arrests that we've been making. And, you know, I'm pretty sure you're a recipient of all my news releases in regards to um, you know, our Medania Drug Task Force, our DEA agents, and of course, our officers from SWAT and canines, you know, making all these, uh, executing all these search warrants and making all these arrests, and it's all attributed to drugs. And really, we couldn't have done this. We couldn't have been able to infiltrate all these, uh, these drug activities that are occurring within our community if it wasn't the help from the community coming forward and providing us with all the information. Mm -hmm. um I don't want to ask you about any, you know, confidential mm -hmm. information or stuff that's, you know, mm -hmm. like currently under GPD's investigation. But I know the commu the reaction from the community is, wow, you know, this this drug task force mm -hmm. is really cracking down and everything. I think like in the first week there were like 14 arrests or something like that, big busts. Yes. Um, how has the caseload been affected by stuff that you guys are already looking into and you know, 
with this program now in place and everything like that? Because it seems like you guys really hit the ground running and really went all out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, the chief, you know, and the, the uh, vice mayor were coming from the governor's office and everything to, to first spruce up and, 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 and build this task force. It really, um, like you said, they, the, you know, the men and women that make up the um, Mandania Drug Task Force has hit the ground running. And, you know, it's the caseloads that they average, you know, on a, on a weekly basis is just by far... Um, you know, the rest that we're seeing, that we're putting on in the community that, um, you know, that's being reported, it really does, um, you know, if you look at um, the Mandania symbols from mountain to mountain and the challenges that they face and the peaks that they have to climb, um, it really is from the north end of the island to the southern end of the island. And, you know, we're really getting the information. We're receiving great information that's helping our investigators. And again, it's attributed to the community members wanting a safer and secure community and we couldn't have done it again without the community understanding the importance of coming forward about information that they have about crime or suspicious activities that they may see that you know why are there so many vehicles at odd hours of the night and you know cars that we've never seen before um, by them providing this information it helps build the case for our investigators so and yeah. this also sends a message to other people in the community who may be doing drugs, selling drugs, bringing drugs into the island and everything like that. Like, like at some point, we are going to be knocking at your door and we are going to bring you down. Absolutely. You know, um, when I go into the community uh, watch meetings and everything, we tell them that criminals take a 50-50 chance when they, when they commit crime. You know, it's like the risks or, you know, the rewards outweigh the risks. So I, I'm willing to take that chance. But when you have a community that has an active neighborhood watch program, when you have a community that's empowered and informed about what they can do to help, and they give that information. Now we lessen that and we increase our chances of catching them by 80-20. You know, it's, there's a 20% chance now that if I go into this place and I, I'm, I'm selling drugs here, there's an 80% chance that I'm going to get caught because the neighbors that are, you know, don't want to get involved now are empowered to get involved because they're seeing the activity. I may get caught. So we want to lessen the chances of them getting away with their so-called activity. So, again... Um, the efforts from the community coming forward, it really has been paying dividends for not just the Mandania Drug Task Force, but our investigators in general. It's like you and the chief said so many times, the force multiplier effect. Absolutely. And again, okay. it's that community partnership that we've, we've, we've stressed with our community or in the policing strategy. And it, 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 it's coming to, you know, to light when, when, when um, neighborhoods are asking, can we help us? Can you help us form a neighborhood watch program? What do we need to look out for? So, you know, again... Thank you to the community. You know, again, let's take an active stance. All right, what do we got for this week's Crime of the Week? This week, unfortunately, is a purse snatching that occurred at the Verona Resort. Okay, let's go find out how, what we can do over in Tuma. The Guam Police Department is investigating a purse snatching complaint that occurred within the lobby of the Verona Resort in Tumont. The preliminary investigation suggests that on Sunday, February 11th at around 11 p.m., the female victim was sitting in the lobby area of the Verona Resort when a man then entered the lobby and grabbed the victim's purse. The suspect was seen fleeing in a light-colored sedan up JFK Hill towards Route 1 Marine Corps Drive. The suspect was only described by the victim to be possibly local with a skinny build. He was last seen wearing a gray shirt with beige shorts and a dark hat. The Guam Police Department is asking if anyone may have witnessed this incident to please call our dispatcher at 472-8911. If anyone has any information about this crime or any other crime, you can call our 24-hour hotline at 477-HELP, that's 4357, or submit a tip online at guam.crimestoppersweb.com. All calls will remain completely confidential, and a cash reward of up to $1,000 could be paid if the information provided leads an arrest and a grand jury indictment. Your call does make a difference. All right, Sarge, we appreciate it as always. We'll see you next week. Thanks for having me. All right, thank you. And thank you. Please stay tuned. We are back after this. Leave no room for doubts this Valentine's Day by heading to IT&E. For February only, get your boo the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 for just $59. And for the Apple lovers, get the 10 for just $199 on the 40 gig 4G LTE data plan. Or two S8s for just $199 on a share plan. This sweetheart deal is available for a limited time only.
Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Cars Plus and Mighty has the trucks. And during Ram Truck Month, save up to $97.50 on new Ram trucks. Cars Plus has a great selection of 2018 Ram trucks. Plus, shop our remaining 2017 Ram 1500s. Voted Guam's best truck two years in a row. The Ram truck comes with a five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warrant. And with 1.99 APR financing for qualified buyers, there's no better time to buy than now. It's Ram Truck Month. And only Cars Plus and Mighty has the trucks. Cars Plus, driven by you. And before we close out the news tonight, here's our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday, Zaloria Castile. Also celebrating, Dylan Kailani Acker turning 14. Happy 14th birthday, Goral. We love you so much and are very proud of you from Auntie Michelle, Lola, Poppy, and family. Happy birthday, Kevin. Love mom, dad, grandma, and grandpa. Happy birthday, Art Dula. To our uncle, we wish you many continued blessings. Love, Benny Jr., Trish, and the boys. Also celebrating, happy birthday, Odin Kenyatta Rosalind. Turning four. To our little guy, happy birthday, son. We love you and have a wonderful day. Love, Daddy, Mommy, and your brothers. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and birth date. That's all the time we have from all of us here at Guam's News Network. Thanks for watching and have a safe weekend. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. KUAM TV 8, your home for the 2018 Winter Olympics. Half a day. I'm Peter Duenas, corporate chef and owner of Mescla Restaurants. Join me in my quest for culinary inspiration and some of the best flavors around. This is my food obsession. Well, we just landed in Palau. We got a beautiful weekend planned out for us. Just got our rent a car and we're headed for downtown Karor, where we're gonna be staying for the weekend. And uh, we definitely gotta check out the boys to see what we got on the fresh catch. We're looking for some fresh seafood that we can